Necrophagia, Season of the Dead. What an album. It's pretty extreme for its time. It's often overlooked and underrated. It's a great beginning by a great band. The title track starts the album off with a creepy, atmospheric acoustic guitar intro. Pretty gutsy for a metal band like this back in 1987. But then, Forbidden Pleasure comes in, and it blows you the hell away! I like how the screaming samples are played behind the guitars. Speaking of the lead guitars, they're dissonant, noisy, squealy, and melodic at any point necessary. Just that riff at the guitar break is killer. Like, there is a lot of imagination and thought put into the guitar riffs of this album. And then you have the song Bleeding Torment, which is faster and heavier. Killjoy sounds like a B-movie monster when he growls. Just think of a deadite singing death metal. This song would also feature some cool rhythm and time changes. Speeding up, slowing down, and allowing the mosh pit more freedom. Just listen for the speed change about two minutes in. Then there's the song Insane for Blood. God, I love the lyrics for this album, they're really cheesy. Your dead carcass drained of life, your corpse looks stale as it rots in the night. But also the break in the song that happens about a minute in where it's just the floor tom and the demonic vocals. Ugh! Now that's what I'm talking about! Also, I really like the bass in the song. In fact, the bass for the whole album is really fun to listen to. Yeah, there are a few bass solos on this album. The song Ancient Slumber starts off with a groovy horror sample. And guess what? It's one of the hundreds of songs that are about Evil Dead. See, what I love about Necrophagia is that they don't just focus on the music, they focus on the vibe and the atmosphere. You know, their thing is horror movies, so they use a lot of horror movie samples and a lot of horror movie sounds and a lot of synths and a lot of noise, and it's, it's really cool to listen to. Surprisingly, this song is slower than the previous songs, but that's what makes it sound more evil. Total death metal moment right here. Also, the solo is highly creepy. Oh, mental decay. Hey, this song's about me. Well, the opening riff on this song is really cool. It kind of reminds me of the riff on Autopsy's Flesh Crawl. And then you have Abomination. Lots of memorable moments here. Many changes and really heavy drum parts. Almost sounds like something that came off of Altars of Madness. Terminal Vision. Ugh, that bass. It, you know the bass at the beginning? It kind of reminds me of the opening song from Day of the Dead. Painful Discharge. <laughs> About a minute and 30 seconds in, it kind of sounds like one of the riffs from Slowly We Rot. Beyond and Back, it's a fantastic album closer. It has a lot of changes, variety, use of samples, lots of riffs, and lots of zombie walking. You have basically every single different aspect of metal that there is on this one song. Now, the production really sucks. Everything's muddy and muffled. And it's probably because they were going for a B-movie vibe, so they wanted everything to sound swampy and muddy. And that's pretty cool, but it does kind of take away from the heaviness of the music. To each their own, though. Primarily, it's the drums that sound terrible, because they sound really flat. Speaking of the drumming, that's another problem I have with this album, is that the drumming sounds pretty unrehearsed and sloppy. And as a result, I don't think it's quite as heavy because of it, because it doesn't sound like the band's playing in sync sometimes. Now, there's the old question. Was Seven Churches the first death metal album, or was Scream Bloody Gore the first death metal album? People will name either album for different reasons, but other people will name other albums, such as Morbid Visions by Sepultura, uh, Two Megatherian by Celtic Frost, and then, of course, this one. Now, Season of the Dead would predate Scream Blade Gore by just a few months, plus Necrophagia would go on to be considered one of Death Metal's innovators and push the genre even further. Personally, I've always considered Sepultura to be more heavy thrash metal. And as far as Celtic Frost goes, I think that they're a mix of different kinds of metal. Like, sometimes they sound like thrash metal, sometimes they sound like black metal, sometimes they sound like death metal. It's kind of hard to classify them. So, call them whatever you want, but I usually just go the extreme route and call them extreme metal. Or I just go the really easy route and call them awesome. Back to Season of the Dead. This has plenty of death metal elements in it. I would even go as far as to argue that there are more death metal elements in this album than there were in Seven Churches. The growling is there, the lightning drumming is there, the death metal riffs and atmosphere are there, the horror movie samples are there, and the gore is there. Of course, it still has a few thrash metal riffs, but so do a lot of other well-established death metal bands from the 80s, such as uh, early Morbid Angel and early Deicide. Some of their riffs sound thrashy. Some would argue that both Seven Churches and Season of the Dead weren't exactly death metal, but more bridges towards death metal, as they contained death metal elements but were mostly thrash albums. But ultimately, I think it really depends on where thrash metal ends and death metal begins for each person. I still think that Seven Churches was the first death metal album, but if you can consider Seven Churches death metal, then I don't understand why you can't consider Season of the Dead death metal. 
Whatever way you decide to look at Season of the Dead, it's a satisfying album. Definitely not their best by any stretch, but a great start to their career. Totally hardcore for 1987, even if the production holds it back a little bit. It's an underrated and overlooked classic in death metal history. Grind on.